right. Um, this panel is the UVM panel on black youth mental health. And um, I wanted to introduce our awesome moderator, Dr. Marissa Coleman. Um, she is the Vice President of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion at the University of Vermont Medical Center. This panel will delve into the complex mental health challenges that black and brown youth in Burlington face today. And uh, let's go through and have all of our panelists introduce themselves. Jensleen, you want to start? Is that on? So the end is like, oh, is that one not on? Okay. I think that I, it's on. Yeah. My name is Jocelyn. I am in the Increase BHS. Hey guys, my name is Saudat. I'm at seventh grade from Winooski. Hey guys, my name is Nasura, and I'm at seventh grade from Winooski. Um, hi guys, my name is Molly Asha, and I'm in seventh grade. Hi, my name is Miriamu. I'm in eighth grade, and I go to Hunt Middle School. I'm Javier. I'm a senior at BHS. Thank you, guys. Okay, all right, so this panel is going to highlight the strength and resilience found within family structures, community programs, and the importance of culturally humble care. Um, and I'm going to hand it over now to Marissa. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining and especially thank you to all of the youth on the panel. Really um, am looking forward to this discussion. So, um, but I also have a moderator helper right next to me that would like to introduce himself as well. Would you like to share? Hi guys, my name is Davis Coleman. Great. Um, and so, as Katie had mentioned, we're here to talk about uh, mental health within um, uh, black community, particularly how it impacts our youth. And I think it's really important to privilege the voices of youth in this discussion because I have said it many times and I think many here may agree that uh, you all are the change makers, the ones that are driving so much um, change and inspiration in our world. And a lot of the things that the adults don't get right and mess up, you see so clearly. And so I'm really looking forward to hearing your perspective on things. And um, we are going to focus on a diverse range of youth perspectives, um, and I'm excited to dive into that. So the first question I'm gonna ask, and really anybody that would like to answer, feel free, we'll pass the mics down, but what, may, what made you most excited to be a part of this panel discussion today? Here's the mic, I'll turn it on. What made you most excited to be a part of this panel discussion today? And if you're not sure if you're excited or if you're having other feelings, I want to hear about those too. Maybe how are you feeling about being on the panel today? Yeah, we're excited to be here. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, we just wanted to come and talk about how things are like. Yeah. Stop that. You want to talk about what, how, just how things are? How's everybody else feeling? Is it kind of intimidating talking about this with like a room of folks looking at you? Yeah. If I was in seventh, eighth, and tenth grade, I think I'd feel nervous. Does anybody feel nervous? Yeah. A little bit, yeah. A little shy. Yes, lots of folks are looking at us, right? So if it's helpful, yeah, Davis, Davis isn't really looking at us. He's, he's hanging out with us. But if it'd, be, if it'd be helpful, you can look at me or you can look at your friend sitting next to you and we can have a discussion and kind of forget that some of the people are here staring at us, if that's helpful, okay? Um, so often when we talk about youth mental health, there's a strong focus on the impacts of social media. How many of y'all, are on social media. Everybody, I'm on social media, I'll raise my hand too. I'm not a youth though. No, you're not on social media. <laughs> okay, okay. So there's some folks in the, there's some youth in the audience that would like to be on social media. So they may think that you all are the lucky ones. So with that said, what aspect of mental health do you think are not being talked about enough or should be getting more attention? What do you think we should be talking more about when we think about mental health? And 
what do you what do you all think? And again, mental health being we think about our, the health of our our physical bodies, we think about the health of our teeth, of our eyes, and then when we talk about mental health, it's of our emotions, right? Our hearts, our minds, how we think about things, how we express our feelings. So what do you think is not being talked about enough related to mental health? No, no, no. I'm not really sure, so. Okay. How about? Look up here. Do you want to pass the mic down? I can't hear. Feelings. Feelings. You don't think feelings are talked about enough? No. Yeah, I I agree. So we can we can share, Mike. You, you're you're sitting next to me. So what, in terms of feelings, um, why do you think it's why do you think it's hard to talk about feelings? Um, sometimes we be shy to talk about it. Sometimes you're sh you're shy to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel shy to talk about feelings sometimes too because I don't know how the other person is going to react. Does that ever happen to you? Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. You have something you want to say? Um, I was gonna say like um vaping. We don't talk about that. Oh, say more about that. I don't to make sure everyone knows what you mean by that. Um, some kid they smoke at in the bathroom when the teacher is not uh, around. When the teacher is not around, they're vaping and smoking in the bathroom. Yeah. What do you think about that? Bad. It's bad. Yeah. Do you want to share why you think that's bad? Um, some people when I'm I'm going to bathroom, I saw them when when they're sitting on the ground and smoking. Yeah. That would be hard to see, especially when you know that they're not supposed to be doing that. It's also really bad for your body, too, right? Yeah, so maybe um, folks not talking as much about um, substances, drugs, smoking, alcohol. Is that something that, do you all talk about that amongst yourselves? Like what you think about that? Yeah. Can you, can you talk into the mic? I didn't hear you. Uh, so yeah. Talk with them. Yeah. So what do you what do you talk about when you? Um, we just mostly talk about how like vaping is like harmful to your body and like you might like not realize it in the moment, but you're like inhaling a lot of toxic stuff mm -hmm. that can potentially give you long life consequences. Yeah. Wow. That was the perfect way to describe that. I can tell that you've really thought about that and maybe somebody has spoken to you about the negative consequences of vaping. Thanks for sharing, because there's some even younger people in the audience that are younger than you that I think, okay, um, that are, where it's, it's helpful for them to hear that. Um, do you all remember being this age? Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. Do you have younger siblings? Yeah. So, so is this is does this feel familiar to you? Yeah. Okay. I'm the oldest of three, and so I get it too. Twenty thousand. Yeah. So we'll take questions from the audience in a moment. Um, <laughs> okay. So what else would be what like when you're on social media? How does that make you feel? Good. 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 Why why does it make you all feel good? No, not about vaping, about being on social media. I think we've established that vaping is not positive. That's not good to do. Like there is like okay. positive sides and like negative sides. Can you um there's like positive sides and like negative sides about social media? Yeah, t talk a little bit about that. What what's a positive side of social media? Like social media, it's like fun to be on it. Like you can communicate with like friends that you don't really get to see and like sometimes they're just like like inappropriate stuff on there that a kid shouldn't really see yeah oh can you say that into the microphone um i was gonna add on to her but like yeah things kids shouldn't be seeing on social media um there's also like things that kids shouldn't have access to on social media that they have access to yes that is that worries me the most even about parenting you that, that one day um, that I hear they will have social media because 
when I was growing up, I didn't have the internet in my back pocket 24 seven. Like I didn't have access to like look up things that I was curious about or that a classmate said that I didn't know what it meant. And then a bunch of images pop up. Right. But I really feel for all of you because you have to figure out how to navigate that while still protecting your minds and your hearts. Right. We're talking about our mental health and and it's normal to be curious. And so it's super tempting to look things up when we're curious about it. But it sounds like you all are being really wise about that and it, and probably have some adults in your life that may be talking to you about that, about what to be careful of. Um, the other thing that I think about with social media too is it opens you up to people outside of your community or your school and all over the world and that could be positive in building community and that it also has risks associated with it too. Do you know what I mean when I say that? I see some nodding. Does anybody want to share about what do you think I mean by that? What are some of the risks of social media? Maybe somebody who hasn't spoken before. So that's me. Yeah. Um, if you don't have I don't have any question for that. It's okay. If, if you do. Do you have something that you want to say or you're not sure? I'm not sure. That's okay. Does anybody else want to answer that question or say anything else about social media and what it feels like to have it and to be young trying to understand how to use it? <laughs> say it in the mic. It feels good to have social media. That's why. Why does it feel good to you? You don't know. You just like it. Mm -hmm. Is it interesting? Yeah. Creative things on there. Uh-huh. Yeah. That, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so we're here today celebrating Juneteenth, which in part recognizes the generational and intergenerational trauma of slavery and its impacts on black Americans. And I would say throughout the diaspora, right? Slavery has impacted many people throughout the world. Um, what impact would you say does your blackness have on your mental health? Like being a black um, person growing up in this time, when you think about that or when you talk about that either within family or within community or at AALV, what does it feel like? What comes up for you? I can pass the mic down. Do you want to say something? Um, I feel like we get judged a lot. Yes. Can you say a bit more? What, what do you... What do you get judged about? Like, if you're, like, dressed a certain way or you're, like, talking a certain way, people, like, think you're, like, doing something. Um, and, and how does that feel to be judged based off of um, your race? It's, like, annoying because, like, you don't even know me and you're judging me. Yeah, of course. Does anybody else want to talk about what, what you think about in terms of experienced? I've experienced that too. It's really hurtful. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really easy for that to impact how you may see yourself or feel about yourself, right? If we don't protect our own minds or have somebody else that we could talk to about that. I'm seeing some head nods. Is that, does that, does that, do you relate to that? Does that make sense or, yeah? I think the point about being judged is a really important one in this idea of um, people potentially having negative thoughts about being black and um, how that may impact their feelings about us. Um, so we have someone that joined us at the end of the table, an inter yes. interpreter. Yes. Great, thank you. Thank you. Hello, hi, Marissa, welcome. Thank you for joining us. That one should be working now. Okay, we're gonna pass the mic down. We have a mic that's working now. Please. Okay, so I'm gonna ask the question again, um, just, um, and, then, and then I'll pause for you to interpret to see if there's some other um, thoughts. 
Okay. Yeah, we can. You can give it. You can give it to her, and then we can share the microphone. So, we um, we are we are here celebrating Juneteenth, which which in part recognizes the generational and intergenerational trauma. Mm -hmm. of slavery and its lo lasting impacts on black Americans. Mm -hmm. Wh what impact would you say does your blackness have on your mental health? Yeah. Does anybody else want to say anything else about that? No. No. Okay. Okay. So we'll ask another question. Um, if the people here today walk away with just one message from this panel. What message do you want that to be? I can. What would you like people to know about what it's like to be youth growing up? I work with them all. They're just a little shy today, but they talk a lot about stigma and like how there's lack of services for a black and brown person a lot. Like yeah. trying to get mental health services from a therapist that don't look like them. Um, yeah. We bring out conversations about stigma and how there's like a lack of conversations about mental health in households or just in general with friends and family also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. That's that's. You, you want to say something? I like to people to know who I am. Yes, why? Why is it important for people to know who you are? Because it's like you need to know what I like and I don't like can, like like this, right? So you can just come to me like this and argue with me. Don't even know me, don't know who, who I am. Yeah. That's the thing like likes people to know things about me. Yeah. 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 Thank you for sharing that. I, I like people to know who I am too because I, I don't like people to assume, right? Because when people don't know us, then they make these assumptions about us, about what we may like based off of how we look. And oftentimes they're wrong. It doesn't feel good when they're wrong, does it? Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like at AALV, you all talk about stigma and trying to find uh, mental health support from a therapist that is black or brown and may look like you and that's hard to find around here. Is that, has that been your experience? Is that true? Do you think about that? Yeah. yeah. So I am a psychologist. I meet with people throughout all of the lifespan, but I love working with teens. And I hear that every week too, where oftentimes parents or other people at school may call and say, I'm trying to find a therapist for somebody that would understand the black experience. Is there anybody is there anybody that has openings? And it is really sad every time I have to say no, that I don't know of anybody who has openings or I don't have openings, because there's not enough of us. Yeah. 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 OK. So. I'm curious some of the things that you all may talk about even at AALV, like when you're talking about stigma or mental health. Is there anything that you would like to share 
here for folks that are listening that may really want to be um, supporters of you all or may want to help advocate um, for more uh, mental health support in the community for black youth? What kinds of things do you talk about at AALV that would be good for other people to know? I will do different things. We have work workshop, and on Monday we just have a little a little group from girls talk about different thing, and those different program there. And we have a cooking class too. That sounds really great. It sounds like it sounds like you all build community, yeah. and are able to build relationships and trust each other. Does anybody else? Yes, please. Um, at AOV, we just, like, we're, like, really inclusive. Like, there's, like, there's, like, kids of, like, the global majority, and, like, it's just, like, really welcoming, and it's, like, a second home for me. Um, and, like, people are just really welcoming and warm there, and, like, it's, like, you'll never be left out there, because they're just, like, really welcoming towards everyone. Thank you for sharing. That sounds so special. And I, I loved hearing you say the global majority, because we are, right? That's the truth. And I never knew that term when I was your age. And I'm so impressed that that is something that you know of and that's in your language. Yeah. That gives me a lot of hope. But it, what I hear you saying is that building relationships and having that community has felt like home in many ways. And that especially when you're going to school and um, you, know, you may not be in the majority in school, right? There may be predominantly white students in school and then you get to go to AALV and be a part of a group and a community. Um, that's really great. And it, the, they help with homework? Oh, that's huge. Everything. So do you go after school? Yes. Oh, wow. That, that's like your second house there. And so how, how long do you stay when you go after school? Um, uh, three to seven. Three to seven? Yeah. So you get snacks and you have classes. You, everything you need is there. That is really, really special. That's really great. Yeah. At the hospital, we try to work with AALV as much as we can because we love we love what the organization is doing, and I think that the partnership and the things that the ways that um, AALV is able to support you all is really unique and special, and so wanting to really um, spread the word about that I think is really important. So. When we think about the adults in the audience, so remember I said we can ignore the folks that are in the room with us and we can just have a conversation. So if we, if we stopped ignoring them for a moment and we looked at everybody looking at us, <laughs> yeah, I know it's kind of silly to think about that, but um, what's important for the adults in the audience to understand regarding youth mental health? Like what do you want either adults in this room or adults in your life? whether it be parents or aunties or uncles or family friends, what do you want them to understand about youth mental health? <laughs> I feel like um, sometimes when parents forbid their kids from doing what they want to do, that could lead to them having mental problems, but even though they may not show it. So I watched this one movie, um, I forgot the name of it. This, he's, uh, this, kid, this kid, like, he, he likes performing, right? His dad tried to get him into a good school, blah, blah, blah. Let's skip that. <laughs> he did not want to become what his dad wanted him to become, so he killed himself in the end because too much pressure was being put on him. Yeah. So I think I've seen that movie. Yeah, I forgot the name of it. I, I can't remember. It's Wave, or I, I can't remember the name of it. But that—that that is a very powerful movie. But you bring up a really important point around 
um, the freedom to be who you are and to um, kind of shape the life you want and how that is that's a privilege that's not really offered to a lot of youth. There's pressures, right? Adults in your life may have expectations on you. What are some ways that you all, well, one, does that connect with your experience? Is that Has that happened to you all? Yeah. What does it feel like when there are those restrictions that are placed on you? Is that sad? Yeah, it's sad, but that leads to like you doing stuff behind their backs. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Why Why does that lead to, to you doing things behind their backs? Because you know the, that's not what they want you to do, but you just kind of do it because that's what you like. Um, yeah. So it kind of makes people feel like they have to hide. Yeah. Yeah. Is hiding good for us? Do you think that helps our mental health? No. Why not? Well, <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. I don't know. Yeah. Does anybody else have any thoughts about why hiding may not be good for your mental health? So I'm guessing that way. Well, uh, well, I feel like you should be able to express who you are and like show the world. And like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 Do you want to add anything? No? OK. Um, so how do you take care of your mental health? What are some things? I, I mean, I heard I heard the group at AALV being a second home. That sounds like something that you could do to take care of your health. Is there anything else that you all do to take care of your health, yeah. your mental health? Yeah. So me, I just go to the gym. Sometimes I just go outside and play soccer. Yeah. yeah. Those are all really great things. Um, exercising and working out and um, moving your body does help to. Um, help our mental health and also helps to build resiliency. Do you know what resiliency means? Like our ability to um, cope with difficult times in our life. And that's something that black people have a whole lot of, right? We are very resilient people. Do you have something you want to add? Um, at AOV, that's what like girls group is like for. Like we just like talk about like our mental health and like our households and what like we just think that's like different from other people because like you know like we're African. <laughs> Can you say a bit more about what you said we're African and then you did a laugh? Can you talk? About what do you mean by that? Or what does that mean to you? Like, we're, like, treated, like, like, the girls, we're, like, kind of, like, treated differently from the boys. Mm -hmm. like the, for, I think I understand what you mean, but I don't want to assume that everybody here does. Can you explain it a little bit more? Like, the boys, they have, like, more privilege. Like, they can do a lot of stuff, and the girls, we're just, like, we have to be home at, like, at a specific time. We can't do certain stuff because, like, we're women and stuff. It's, like... Mm -hmm. I can tell that you have some feelings about that, maybe. Yeah, I get that. I get that. That also, does somebody else want to say something about that? No. You agree with your friend mm -hmm. that there are some different expectations on girls? Yeah. What do other people do to care for their mental health? No, not me. Guys, don't be shy. I know you share a lot about stress reliever at ALD. <laughs> um, something I do. Wait, what was the question? Sorry. What do you do to take care of your mental health? Uh, something I do to take care of my mental health is like just do the things I love to do. Um, which is like just be around the girls and stuff and um, uh, I just like talking to the girls and like 
I like playing sports also. Like, I would play like volleyball for fun and like soccer and like just like hang out with the girls. I feel like that gets like me the happiest. Like just being around people like that make me feel warm. Yeah. That's really beautiful. Anything else you want to add? And so, and so it's really good to know part of why this question is important is because, um, you know, sometimes things in life, things happen in life, meaning we're not always going to feel at our best or feel our happiest. And so it's helpful to know what can help us with our mental health. So when we do feel lower, we can reach out to a friend, right? We can try to get the girls together, or we can talk to somebody at AALB, because you know for yourself that that helps you feel better, right? Yeah. For me, I love being by water. Water helps me feel better. If I'm not feeling great or if I'm feeling stressed out, I'll try to end my day walking by the lake. Um, so I, we're going to have some time for folks in the audience. I know there were some kids in the audience that also had some questions and we want to make sure that everyone, um, it, it, before I, before I turn it over, is there anything that I didn't ask that you would like to talk about? Oh yeah. Okay. Hold it for me. Yep, two hands. <laughs> no. Okay. So I would like to invite... Um, a youth up from the audience that's special to me. So my child, Sophia, is going to join and ask um, a question for you all. Is that okay? Okay. If you had a magic wand and you could change one thing about our community to help improve our mental health, what would you change? Like, what what challenge would would you make? Yeah. Wait, no. What? Yeah. yeah. No, you got it. No. What change? What change would you make? Yeah. Um, that kid don't, don't smoke in the bathroom at school. And don't fire at school too. Be yourself. Um, I want to add on to the like smoking. I feel like we should just like ban it. Um, can I say two things? Um, so the first would probably be like, oh sorry, uh, the first would probably like have kids not have as easy access to like things on social media and like also like just substances in general. Um, they shouldn't be having such easy access to such things and also like um, more women leadership roles. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the question was, if you had a magic wand that could change anything in our community to help our mental health, what would you change? I don't know. Oh, you don't know? Yeah, like, no. said, oh, he said, okay. I, I, I didn't understand then. I'm sorry. Um, those are all really great answers. I can tell you all have thought about that. I hope to see a lot of you in leadership roles too. You know, it can start in your school. Um, so with that, I'd like to invite our audience if they have any questions for um, our panels, um, panelists, and um, you can feel free to ask. Any thoughts or any questions you want to ask? No. I see a hand over there. Okay. I don't know if we have another mic. Um, I just want to thank you all for having the inner strength to be here. It's really helpful, and you add so much to our community. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, there's two questions. Got more questions? Yeah. Oh, wow.
Uh, I just wanted to say thank you for uh, participating, but my question is, how do you overcome you. fear in pursuing something that's meaningful to you? Great question. I close my eyes. Uh, <laughs> wait, what was the question again? I'm sorry. Uh, how do you overcome fear? Uh, the, uh, fear, I think, sometimes yeah. psychological or there's a mental aspect of going beyond your comfort zone. How do you go beyond your comfort zone? It, overcome challenges and our uh, mental health. Um, I kind of look at the bright side of it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I try to stay positive. Uh, put yourself out there and be who you are. <laughs> That's really, really uh, great advice. Uh, yep. Oh, Sophia would like to answer. Um, one way that I like come over a fear is like I think of like something that makes me happy. Like example, my family, ice cream sprinkles. <laughs> <laughs> so you all may know what we may be getting here today. Yo. <laughs> Sophia, I have something to add for you. The whole world is not rainbow unicorns and rainbows. <laughs> so so Fitz, so when the when your world is not unicorns and rainbows, what do you do to feel better? In soccer. Play hockey, it's baseball, soccer. and soccer. It sounds like you may connect with our friend at the end who likes to play soccer and get out and run. Yeah. I play soccer. You do play soccer. Yep. We have another hand. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia. I just want to say thank you. All of you are incredible for being here. If, you know, when I was your age, I definitely couldn't do what you're doing up here and sharing very vulnerably and honestly, so thank you. I'm just thinking about how a lot of the times, I think as adults, you know, we see children, we see kids, and we tend to make their problems less of because you're a child, right? And that's just an assumption. So my question for you is, what would you tell adults that say, well, you don't have real problems because you're a child or you're because you're young or youth. I'd love to hear your perspective on that because I'm sure you've been told that. Thank you again. Would anybody like to answer that? It's a great question. It's a great question. No. I'm still thinking. Uh -huh. Take your time. If you want to walk in my job, I would like you to sit down. Yeah, I'm sure. Or do we want to repeat the question? Oh, okay. Skip the question. Skip the question. Can you use the microphone? Yeah. Um, I just feel like they really can't say that because I feel like half of the time they don't really realize what we got going on mm -hmm. because like they like talk so little about like mental health and like just like overall well-being and like whenever you try to talk about it. 
I think I'm African, so I'm parents. Yes. So I was like, mental health that we hear here yes. in Africa, we don't know about that. So what you call here mental health, as I don't think we take is mental health. So that is the big problem our children having here and us. First of all, some parents they have problem communication. Mm -hmm. So they don't understand English. Mm -hmm. They don't know what that means. Yeah. So they just, the way we, we grew up back home. Yeah. So we want to raise our children like that here. Uh -huh. But we don't know um, how the children are having those problems, mental health. Yeah. So, and the situation here, wherever we come from, is different too. Yeah. So that, that like I came here in 1996, uh -huh. so there were no African, there were no black people here. So my children went to school, they had a lot. What are you gonna call today mental health? But for me, it was no mental health. I was not seeing that like it's mental health. Yeah. It's this like situation you go to school, like my son was going to rice and my daughter. So they were the only black there. So it was tough for them to, you know, they didn't have friends, they didn't make friends. So it was very hard, and my daughter even didn't stay. She was there for one year and she left. She went to BHS because she could not handle it. So that is a trauma that you call trauma, but we don't call that trauma. So I was telling my kids, like my son, you're gonna stay until you finish school. So he stayed, he finished it, but it was not easy for him. So I didn't understand that it was, he had a trauma. For me, I said, just you can do it, just do it, do it. So that's the difference. It's a language. First of all, and the way we grew up and the way they're growing up here is very, very different. So I understand them because I, you know, I know I'm parents. I do the same thing like their parents. Yeah. So we have is I think we need more like education, you know, parents to know that how the kids, uh, the situation having here, how we can help our children. To, to handle those trauma, that they call trauma, mental health. I think that is the big difference. I understand them, I know what you're talking about. So <laughs> I think that we could don't call the same thing. Thank you. Thank you. That, that's really, I, one, you made many important points that I think um, I just want to just talk about what resonated um, with me. So my, my mother was born in Jamaica and um, uh, came here a long, long time ago. But I, I experienced kind of what you're talking about, where there's some different expectations put on, especially around school. And if there are challenges in school, whether it be social challenges, that is always secondary or third or fourth to the academic focus. And um, the point that you made about there being um, difference in terms of expectation, but also what parents may know in terms of how to raise them and then what the children may experience here and, and kind of um, helping with the communication gap so that they're that they can come together and share everything. Because I know that the parents want to know how their children are doing. Yeah. But it can sometimes be hard to share. Thank you. Does anybody want to say anything? Oh. Okay. All right. Oh, there's a question back there. Davis. Davis is going to run the mics. Oh. We have a double, double team over here. Is that okay? She's going to do the question after the statement. How about that? <laughs> My question is, if you had a superpower, what would it be? Mm. Mm. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get all of that. We'll we want to start on the past. No, oh my gosh, the excitement was already there for That's a good <laughs> Flying. Flying. Anybody yeah. else? Um, probably like, I guess, being invisible. Um, mine will probably be like getting my. <laughs> mine will probably be like getting my hair done in the snap. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I, I'm gonna be wishing for that next Friday when I'm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your nails. Done. 
How about you? What what superpower would you like? Um, fast. To be fast. Yeah. yeah, I would love that one too. Davis, you had okay. We have Savvy. You're gonna get in on this. Kicking a bowl so hard that I can break through glass. No, it's not. If I had a superpower, I would probably want is invisibility because like at school a lot of people like talk about me behind my back and it really annoys me and if I was invisible I could just walk up to them without them seeing me and then hear what they're saying about me and get them in trouble. What would be your superpower fix? Um, kind of like Sophia's because on the first day I got bullied. And that's hard, yeah. Does Savvy want to say anything? No? Okay. You want to add on to that? Okay. Um, I was just kind of adding on to what Fitz said because like around mid-November, me and my friends had this big fight, and one of them has hated me ever since. I have not understood why. Like, I've made up with everybody else except for that one girl, and she kept on hanging on to it. And then apparently I, I've been like rude to her other friends, and I've, been, I've just been so confused. And I'm just like, I didn't do anything to you. Then, like, why? Why are you doing this to me? Like, what did I do to deserve this? Mm. Well, you didn't do anything to deserve that. That's for, for sure. And I'm wondering if there's anyone on the panel that has experienced anything like that, or if anyone has any advice for Sophia. Oh, you want to run the mic? Okay, run the mic. Okay. So are you okay? They're gonna answer. Does anyone have any advice for somebody that has been bullied or if there's like a mean Just kid? Just ignore them. Uh, ignore them. Is it easy to ignore or hard? Hard. It's easy for you to ignore? Yeah. Is it hard for others to ignore? It's hard. Yeah. Yeah, I also think you should ignore her. And she probably has her own problems. It's not, I don't think it's you. I think it's her. She's um, uh, like... I don't know, but, uh, wait, can you talk for a little? I need to think, I need to think. Okay. Um, uh, I was gonna say, like, I don't know if it's like irrelevant or something, but I was gonna say, like a saying that I like always said to myself, when like like I had people like because I also like got bullied when I was younger like I had people make fun of my hair uh, when I went to school and stuff and um, something I tell myself now is like uh, uh, what people hate they oh my gosh I forgot the quote um, what people hate they fear and what they fear they seek to destroy and I feel like you should just ignore them. Like, just let them with the flow. Like, you gotta go with your flow and like, just ignore the haters and like, you do you. Um, and I'm gonna say, keep your head up. Don't like, don't care about what they say. Um, just like, don't care like what they say and stuff and like, keep your head up and like, um, I'm really sorry to hear that. That's like really hard, um, especially for someone your age. Uh, I can imagine being that being hard for you, and like it can be an impact for like your learning and just like your social health in general. And I'm like sorry that happened to you. Mm -hmm. It's really kind. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to say anything? Yes. Um, thanks for that. I'm going to keep that in mind, and I'm just going to repeat it in my mind when she's being a jerk. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have a few more moments, but I have a question. Yep. Yeah, well, first of all, um, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you guys. I really love to see you during the meeting and you know, work with you. And I think um, while this is about your mental health, I just want to say you guys have made my mental health better by how this being so welcoming and kind and, you know, gave me a lot of that stuff. And um, I guess in listening to you guys, it makes me wonder a little bit more about your experience. Um, goes to school in a predominantly white state. Um, I feel like there's probably a lot of challenges with that and maybe with myself about it. Um, I'm too worried. Guys, don't be shy. It's okay. Share about what you feel in school. Um, things you share in ALB. It's a very safe space. Does anybody want to talk about what it feels like to go to school here in Vermont? Um, it, it can like feel uncomfortable because um, last year um, there weren't many, there weren't that many kids at my school that were a part of the global majority, and I felt like I was getting uh, stared at, like when we were talking about like slaves, like. Uh, when it came like uh, Black History Month, we like usually like have a few lessons on like um, well-known uh, black people, and I felt like I was just like getting stared at every time they said the word slave. Um, I was the only black student in the classroom with my other friend, and it just like felt really uncomfortable because everyone was staring at me. Who's the mic? Who's the mic? I don't know, put it That's good. Not just Would anybody else like to share? I relate to what you said that happened to me when I was growing up and I was in high school as well. Yeah. It's an awful feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I also hate like the name calling and just like stere uh, stereotypes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Would anybody else on the panel like to say anything? Okay. Um, wait, what was the question? <laughs> Sorry. What is it wait. like to go to school in Vermont in a predominantly white school? It just feels like kind of off because like I really want to go to like a black college to like be with my community and stuff. And I guess like being, I guess like being in a white school just kind of feels like, like what am I doing here? But, and at my old school, I mean, I love that school and like my friends and stuff, but like it felt kind of weird because me and my family, we were like the only black family in the entire school. And me and my brother Fitz, we both had this experience where we were always the only black person in our class. And it just, it just felt like really sad because like, why, like why aren't there, why isn't there anybody else like me in my classroom, in, in my school? And I mean, I'm telling you, it was a small school, but at least can we get a little more diversity? like? There was like only one family, like two families, my family and my friend's family. Like we were the only black family, families in the school. And I just felt like so sad because, and they kept on like, the head of the school kept on asking me like what, like what can we do to, make the school better and I kept on saying more black people like more global majority like more people from like Africa or Asia or the Caribbean like that kind of stuff 
thank you. Yeah. Um, there's a question in the back. Yeah. Okay. First of all, I want to thank each and every one of you for your powers. And I want to tell you, more importantly, more than anything else that comes out of this room, you walk in this power. Mm -hmm. No matter what, you're powerful. No matter what you said outside, you walk in this power. A lot of people have no idea what it's like to live in this state. Or they may have an idea, but they ignore those ideas. It's breaking my heart to hear the kids still experiencing the same exact thing in 2024 that my children experienced way back in 1993. Whenever I first got here, my kids weren't even allowed in the school. They were kept out of school for two whole weeks. We had to find a train to get them to school. And their biracial, which made it even more complex and more complicated and added even more to their student problem. And to hear that this is still happening in 2024, it's sad. It's not sad. It just tells me that I have to change rules and put a different hat on and get back and forth Because that's the only way that it's going to be. Should have mattered with the approved girl or whatever that they're defining something that should have mattered. These young minds should be focused on their education, not on stimulation, not on all the things that they have to say that, you know. It's, it's just, it, it's so disappointing because I wanted to think that in my advocacy role, or many men here, it's a goal that I didn't meet this little tiny minute change of margin. But it seems as though it hasn't been affected at all. And Vermont likes to do this stuff by the fact that it's so liberal and it's so open and it's so accepting. And it is not. Unfortunately, these young voices, this power and this moment, will tell you that it is not. It's an illusion. And when they're the future, that they're still dealing with the past, what kind of future do we actually have? I think that's the conversation that we need to have. And it needs to be a much bigger one than just this, this little panel. I think it needs to be not on them, but on us. It's just empowering to hear the voices. And I thank you all for having the courage to be able to share with all these people. Because I know it's not easy. This is not a safe space. It's not a comfortable space. But I think it's empowering to hear these voices. I just wonder what everybody would do when they leave out of it. Thank you. So that's a wonderful um, point to end on. And um, before we close out, I want to just ask if everyone on the panel could just go down what is one thing you like about yourself? We'll end with that. Who would like, you want to start at the end? What is one thing you'd like about yourself? Funny. You're funny, yeah. Okay. You next. We'll just go down the line. What's one thing you like about yourself? Uh, yeah. Next. One thing you like about yourself. Okay, you're gonna you get the answer. I think it's my eyes. Your eyes? Okay. Okay. I'm gonna give you the microphone. I'm gonna give you. Okay. My face. Your face. Yeah. Um, my body. Your body. Good. You want to say something? No? OK. All right, well, I would like to thank everyone on the panel. I'd like to thank the Burlington REIB office and the Juneteenth organizers, um, the uh, King Street Center AALV, um, our interpreter, um, the DEI team, and most importantly, all of you for coming here and engaging in this discussion. Thank you so much.